Um, good morning, everybody. First of all, let me thank the organizers and the chairperson for giving me an opportunity to participate in this wonderful meeting. I must also say I am a retired scientist too. And uh, I say my, I was lucky to get a post-retirement appointment. So my topic would sound as though I am a devil's advocate for using the stem cells. I'm going to throw spanner in the works, or I'm going to spoil the show. No. First of all, I'm going to talk to you about the positive story, how we, we have used the stem cells to repair the brain. Um, in this regard, I would like to thank my colleague, Professor Shankar Narayan Rao, for introducing the resident stem cells. You all have heard about embryonic stem cells, induced pluripotent stem cells, but the resident stem cells, which are present in the subventricular zone, are also very important. As Dr. Rao told you, so we can tap the potential of these resident stem cells to repair the brain. And this is a familiar slide which you saw in his talk. And he focused on the hippocampus here. How even in adult brain, neurogenesis is possible and how hippocampus has got resident stem cells and neurogenesis occurs. I am going to focus on this region called olfactory bulb. So adult neurogenesis occurs in the brain, in the hippocampus as well as in the olfactory bulb. But you can also induce neurogenesis in the motor cortical layer as well as the striatum. Where are these resident stem cells are located? They are located, the red ones, follow the red one, the subventricular zone also surrounding the central canal in the spinal cord. So our story is going to be on the olfactory bulb. I love this olfactory bulb. I also love retina. Such a beautiful layered structure you get. And this is the glomerular layer, external plexiform layer, mitral cell layer, internal plexiform layer, and granule cell layer. Dear friends, please focus on this mitral cell layer. That is where my story is going to be. And we know that this olfactory bulb, which is responsible for the sense of smell, for the olfaction, consists of, I did something bad, consists of form interneurons, very glomerular cells, and granule cells. These are interneurons. What we wanted to see was can it form this projection neurons also, the mitral cells. The projection neurons like mitral cells, retinal ganglion cells in the retina, and motor neurons are very, very important neurons. They have long projections. They integrate lot of signals. If we can use the resident stem cells to regenerate into projection neurons, not just interneurons, boring neurons, projection neurons, that is indeed a big deal. Did we manage to do? What did we do? Our experimental model has been the newborn rat. 
So what we did was, we did an olfactory tract transection. This is the olfactory bulb. These are the mitral cells which project to the brain. Since we have done olfactory tract transection, axons of the mitral cells are cut and there is a retrograde degeneration of mitral cells. So now, going back to a question again, can we make the migrating stem cells to form the mitral cells? So what did we do? How did we assess the mitral cells whether they can regenerate or not? So the mitral cells project to different parts of the brain, thalamus, hippocampus, amygdala, entorhinal cortex, orbitofrontal cortex, and the key structure here is pyriform cortex. So what did we do? We injected retrograde tears to the pyriform cortex. So when the axons are cut, when the mitral cells are degenerated, they cannot take this dye back to the soma. If they can regenerate, they would take the dye to the soma. So what happened? So we looked at seven days following olfactory tract transection. And this is the control. You can see the retrogradely labeled beautiful mitral cells in the control, but not in the transected rat, where the olfactory tract has been transected. But guess what? After 45 to 70 days post-transection, and this is the control, you can see the mitral cells. Wow! Even in the mitral cells, the transected rats have taken the retrograde dye. So that indicates that following transection, there was a degeneration of the axons and the mitral cells. And over a period of time, automatically, the mitral cells got regenerated, rejuvenated, and new mitral cells are formed. Their axons project to the target and they were able to get the dye. So a regeneration has occurred. Even in the case of projection neurons. We always used to talk only about interneurons. But this has happened. So what's happening here? You see, these are the stem cells here. The subventricular zone. They migrate and reach the olfactory bulb. In a normal control situation, they will form only interneurons. Since we have made neonatal tract transection, see here, in the normal control, you can see these newly born neurons or stem cells, the granular cell layer only. No stem cell or no neuron in the mitral cell layer. In the case of transected cell, Animal. In addition to new neurons in the granule cell layer, you also find new neurons in the mitral cell. And they looked exactly like the mitral morphology. And we know that this is a newly generated neuron by BRDU labeling. So, what have we achieved? In the normal situation, the migrating stem cells would form interneurons like granule cells and periglomerular cells. Since we have introduced the olfactory tract transection, in addition to forming these interneurons, they have formed key projection mitral cells. So the resident stem cells have done a wonderful job. 
Then we, this was not just an anatomical connectivity. There was also an electrophysiological connectivity established. And functional restoration. That is the ultimate key point you look forward to. That was also established by the revival of mitral cells and their projection. So we probed the microenvironment and we found that there was an increase. We looked at the gene expression for trophic factors. There was an abundant increase in the brain derived neurotrophic factor, the fibroblast growth factor. So if only we can manipulate the microenvironment, even in a postnatal brain, we can induce resident stem cells to form even projection neurons and establish connectivity. I believe this is a very important finding. So that's the first aspect of my story. And you all have heard about the IPS cells, and that is the flavor of the month, I must say. So what are the potential applications of induced pluripotent cells, which can be derived from fibroblasts of the patient, or a normal subject, as well as lymphocytes? You can de-differentiate them to form stem cells. You can re-differentiate them to form neurons. So I'm a neuroscientist, so I will always talk about neurons. Not only neurons, you can also make them to differentiate into astrocytes, microglial cells, oligodendrocytes. So you can create a human organoid for doing all the experiments. You can use it for high throughput screening for different drugs. And also we talked about personalized medicine and these cultures can be used to develop candidate drugs and test them. And more exciting part of it is using the CRISPR-Cas system can do gene editing and gene correction. I heard a recent talk in an Alzheimer's meeting where they developed this organoid from cells obtained from a patient, Alzheimer's patient. It carries the gene APOE4. Whenever the patient carries the gene APOE4, it is bad news. Lots, lots of amyloid block formation, neuronal degeneration, ability of glial cells to clear the blocks also is very limited. So what they have done? They did gene correction. Converted APOE4 to APOE3. Then they could rectify all the problems. The next part is how to introduce into the human patient still we are a bit far away from that. So these are exciting opportunities and many areas to work on. And if you look at the number of diseases where stem cells can be used for therapeutical application, the list goes on and on. I'm not going to read out. So having said that, why do we need to handle the stem cells with care? Yeah. So many clinics claim that they have treated thousands of patients with phenomenal recovery. The same stem cells are used to treat multiple diseases. And there is no clear mention of the protocols how did you derive the stem cells and how you are applied to the human patient? And there are high costs or hidden costs. It will be out for lakhs and lakhs of rupees. FDA, 
Food and Drug Administration of US. It is the mother of all regulatory bodies. And we always look upon to FDA for clearance of any new drug or any therape new therapeutic modality. So FDA has issued warning letters to several clinics, stem cell clinics, for claiming that they can do wonders to the patients, which is not. So if you look at the FDA approval for stem cell therapy, as of August 29, 2017, bone marrow cells, bone marrow stem cells for cancer care, yes. And blood cells, cord blood cells, cord blood stem cells for hematological disorders, yes. Rest of them are under still clinical trials. There are so many clinical trials which are happening. So there is an urgency. There are so many patients there. In, I know about neurological patients. No cure. Even cure, if it is there, only at the symptomatic level. But urgency is not an excuse for bad science. You have to do proper science, proper research. Then we need to understand how these stem cells migrate and reside. In which part of the brain? Is it going to the part of the brain where you intend them to go to? And how do they integrate with the host tissue? What is the response of host tissue following stem cell transplantation? And we also have to monitor the phenotype. For example, we know in our own experience, some of the experiments carried out in the past, we thought that there are going to be definitely neurons. And once you transplant them, they become glial cells. An objective evaluation of beneficial harmful effect. It's always medicine is benefit versus risk. If you have more benefits and manageable risk, please introduce. And reproducibility is a must and stringent standards should be practiced. Freedom of research along with cherished ideals of freedom of thought and freedom of conscience. So we need proper objective research before the stem cells can be applied in the large scale. So finally, I would like to thank my collaborators for this work. And thank you so much.